we have a stepped system. This simulator simulates a stepped lighting system. You can see these steps. We shut the daylight off. You can see the steps of electric lighting turning on and off. This system has four steps. It could be legitimately two track lighting tracks set next to each other in a retail location where you're using some of the track lighting heads for general illumination and these would be those heads. All right. I have a knob on the side that adjusts the daylight in these space up and down. Now this is an open loop system. In fact, we don't even know where the sensor is. It's, we'll say it's three rooms down in an atrium, uh, 30 feet up, but we know we're going to get a ton of light in this location. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and record the illumination in the space from no daylight conditions to full daylight conditions. Now we're under no daylight conditions. So you guys will be using something just like this tomorrow, perhaps this one. This works fine, I'll bring in a smaller one as well. We're under no daylight conditions, all four, all four stages of the lights are on, so we're under no daylight conditions. My light meter is reading 43.2 foot candles, so that's our reference illumination. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the chart. 43.2 foot candles under genuine no daylight conditions, that's our reference illuminance. Now if I were to cover this sensor, it's not going to do a thing. All the lights are already up under true no daylight conditions, right? Cover the sensor, all that, that, there's no reason for any more lights. There are no more lights to come on, okay? So I'm going to slowly increase the daylight into the space. We're coming up from 43, yeah, there's 45, 47, 48. 49, 50, 55, and bingo, a stage of lights just snaps off. When you do a partial daylight test for a step system, they want to know how bright it still is in the room when a stage just snaps off. You guys will be filling out this code scrap, or this piece of the form, tomorrow, right? They want to ensure that the lowest lighting levels in the room, which is when a stage just snaps off, is keeping you above your reference illumination. Just like with a continuous case, we don't want to drop below the genuine three in the morning, no daylight electric level. So I'm reading 52.7. And I'm going to make an extra step and flip off the area controls and see what kind of daylight I've got. I'm at 20 foot candles daylight. I've got, we'll call it 53 total. So at about 20 foot candles, I've got about 53 foot candles. Combined illumination. This is both electric and daylight in the space. And we're just going to repeat this. We're going to turn our simulator knob clockwise until we just get it to snap off again. I've got 52 at about 31 daylight. So I've got 52 foot candles at about 31 daylight. Now the day progresses, the sun continues to come up, more sunlight intrudes into the space, I turn my knob clockwise to simulate that. I'm at 59.60, there we go, 52.8, and 41 daylight. So 52.8, and about 41 daylight. We'll call that 53 foot candles. Now I have one more stage of lighting to go. Note that I've already passed on power reduction because for a stepped switch system, you're allowed to count the lights. But this doesn't tell the whole story. If we happen to be in the space at the time, we could flip the area control off and go, oh, I'm at 41 daylight, which is a little on the low side. Oh, because
because I still have a stage of lights. <laughs> We're looking at combined for the partial part me. I'll have to edit that out. I don't want to look like a fool in front of students, and particularly not in front of instructors who will be looking at this. I'm going to take the last stage of lights out. I'm going to turn this knob up clockwise until the very last stage of lights goes out. Let's try that again. 51. I have 51 foot candles when the last stage of lights snaps out. So how many foot candles of daylight would I have in the room? 51, all the lights are out. Okay, so is 51 foot candles better than our reference illumination? So it's perfectly good for a full daylight test now, isn't it? Yeah, it's not even excessively high. I'm going to do an extra step that is not required by the test, okay, for the test form. I'm going to rotate the knob backwards. I'm going to let the sun go back down and let the stages of lights turn on. And I can tell you they're going to turn on at just about the same daylight levels as before. So let's, let's look at our combined illumination. I've got 62. Uh, gee, what is 150% of 43? That would be 65 or so. 65.5 or something like that. So, 150% is approximately 65.5 foot candles. 64? 64.5. That sounds good. And where am I at? I'm at 61.5. We'll put that right there. 61.5. Uh, I'm going to rotate the knob counterclockwise so I get another stage. My combined is 61.2. We'll just call that 61 foot candles. And I'm going to rotate it, taking the sun down further, 63-ish, right about there, 63-ish. And we take it down until the last stage of lighting. It's getting late in the afternoon, it's starting to get dark, and the last stage of lighting just snaps on. 63, 62.8, 63, like that. Now, if I connect the dots, this is going to show me what a printout of an actual logging light meter would look like in this area. Sun comes in, first stage of light snaps off. Sun comes in, second stage snaps off. Sun comes in, third stage snaps off. Sun comes in, fourth stage snaps off and the rest of it is all going to be daylight. Here are our partial illumination, or partial daylight test points. If you have up to three stages, you test them all. If you have more than three stages, you pick three. Here is our reference illuminance, when there was no light coming into the area, and here is our full daylight daylight illuminance because there's no lights left to turn off and here is our power reduction 25, 50, 75, 100 percent this system passes fine. It is acceptable if the switch on points exceed 150 percent of the reference illuminance but they'd, they'd rather not have that. So this whole thing could actually be shifted upward as long as these snap off points remain between 100 and 150 percent. There you go. This shows you what a logging light meter will show you in a uh, step switch system. Any questions? The question you'll have once you get done with this course is what do I do about that three minute time delay? There's a state mandated three minute time delay that tells you when you exceed the set point there's supposed to be a three minute delay before the lights snap off. You see, you can do this same thing getting these points. 
by putting an artificial light on the open loop sensor and varying it up and down. Dave's going to show you how to do that little uh, sensor ratio thing to do that. The question is, what do I do about the three minute time delay? The manual, right, that we stay out of because of their friendly advice simply states, oh, uh, I disable any time delay in the system. Really? So you can see where the difficulty is going to lie in testing these. Other than that, they're simple. They're simple, simple tests. These are almost always going to be open loop systems because it's just hard to set up a closed loop system where it's seeing the lights snapping on and off in the room. That's going to kind of make it very difficult to calibrate and set up, right? And uh, that's it. And when Dave gets to the step system, you're going to see a graph very much like that that comes right out of the manual. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Oh, thank you, Dave. Visit the lab. You guys are going to be doing tomorrow.